bottom of, of, of this. Sorry, Mike? Well, I mean, there was much discussion yesterday with Hightower. And it's possible Hightower wasn't even sure what, what cakes you were unveiling there on Sunday. The two fumbled, the muff, two muff, muff punts. Can you reveal what type of kicks those were? Banana, knuckle, something else? Mate, you know I can't give away all our secrets. Okay. Well, might that have been one of them, though? Sorry? Might that have been one of them? Uh, A banana ball? Yeah. No. No. Knuckle? Uh, <laughs> okay. No. Did you do anything different on those muff punts? I mean, was it a you know, particularly unusual type of kick for you or no? Uh, no, not really. Okay. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it was different conditions. Um, not so much on the field, but uh, once you got the ball in the air, it was pretty gnarly conditions. Um, so sort of one of those ones where it's like, I think for every punt returner, it's sort of like you've, they've got to make that decision on in different balls whether the best is to come up and try to field it or get away from it, things like that. Um, the second one was just a regular flip, and I just don't think he, like a regular end over end ball, I don't think he judged it great. Um, like I said, on the field, it didn't feel like too much wind. Um, but once you got the ball up in the air, it sort of carried the ball pretty well pretty far and that one was more with the wind and I think it hit sort of just he just judged the second one wrong you see the ball pop out, Mitch. what's your vantage point are you running down the field and what's the kind of relief and excitement you get when you see that happen yeah I mean just excitement um it's a big play for the team um there's not much I can do from where I am so I'm just pretty pretty happy and trot off to the sideline basically study the weather and, and try and get a feel for all that stuff before the game? Uh, I look at the weather, um, but really there's not too much you can do until you get out there. Um, you can have a pretty good idea on what way the wind's going and stuff like that, but um, you can sort of prepare for what to expect and then you sort of can make adjustments in warm-up. That's the way I do it. Uh, I mean, studying the opposition, that's sort of what I look at. I know people on, on like, protection, they look at sort of their rushes and stuff. I I'll i look at sort of, like, their tendencies in eight boxes and seven boxes and things like that, but the majority of what I look at is what the returner's good at, what the returner struggles with, stuff like that. How's fatherhood? It's great. Sure. Maddie's... Uh, Maddie's a legend and takes a lot of the uh, a lot of the uh, work with Bowie. So I, Maddie will do all the work, and then I get to just stare at her. Um, but uh, I'll I'll pick up some more of the uh, responsibilities in the off season. Give Maddie a break. Thanks, guys. Thank you. <laughs> be a lot of that supportive of each other in clothing apparel. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, it's it's fun just to support the guys. Can you, uh, I mean, obviously, the Falcons are a different team with a different staff, and so much has changed, but you know, two years ago, it was this, I think, week, week 15, you guys were coming off a, a big road win, and I think everyone agreed after that loss to the Falcons that you kind of exhaled. I don't know if you talked about games two years, from two years ago, but Seems like it's setting up to be a similar situation. Is that even been discussed or on your mind? Um, it, it, it might have. It's come up at some point that, um, you know, we had that let up two years ago. But, man, I feel like so much is so different. We're in such a different situation. Um, this team is so different. As much as we love to go back and talk about 2019, and I love to do it myself, it was a great year. But um, this team is just such a different team than what we were two years ago. Just um, and not necessarily that it's a, all new guys. It's just we have a new identity, um, and and things have come together differently. So um, I don't think there's there's too much correlation, and I don't think we need any extra motivation. To be honest, I think we're we're gonna be ready to go for this team. What, what, how would you describe this identity and how it's different from 2019? 
Oh, you make me think about this. <laughs> um, I mean, just kind of vaguely is just, um, I mean, I've talked before about how um, in, in 19, uh, we were a big gap team that year, and, you know, we're known for the wide zone. Um, I don't, we still do that, but I don't think it's been quite our identity this season. Um, we've been very much uh, an outside zone, uh, full flow kind of team. So just, you know, little things like that. Um, it's just we go to different route concepts and on third downs than we did two years ago. Just kind of nitty gritty stuff like that. With Debo, how much time does he spend in the running backs meeting room? And, and what is it like watching him kind of jump back and forth and try to absorb all that? Yeah, uh, the impressive thing is he spends almost no time with us. He's never in there with all of us. Um, and that's just a testament to him and just how natural uh, of a runner he is. And uh, Bobby T uh, take, you know, takes him aside between periods, and it's just a few coaching points here and there. Um, he's not in there writing a book and showing him a million clips uh, on tape and all that kind of stuff. Debo just seems to understand it, and he has a really good sense of things, and he's just he's natural back there. So we just give him a couple pointers, and then um, everyone kind of gets out of the way and lets him do his thing. It seems like the, so much of what you guys do, especially with the outside zone stuff, is you know you're on you have to be on a certain track, and your footwork is so important. And all that. So he literally is just learning it as he goes, like it just comes. Yes, to yeah, hundred um, percent. It, like there, I mean, there are many times that um, I mean he hasn't ran the play at all, and it, it's in walkthrough and bef right before the play. Bobby T, you know, toes a seven and a half, aim at the inside leg of the tackle, boom, goes and does it. You know, it, that's, that's what's so impressive and um, what a natural football player Debo is. And um, he doesn't need to be told too much. He can, uh, he can just go out there and he knows what feels right. Is that almost confusing? He says, like, you know, in terms of, like, he doesn't watch other wide receiver tape either. Like, he just, you know, is who he is. Is that just kind of wild to see that every day? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just impressive to see. Um, but... I think it's kind of it's kind of the um, the collection of guys that Kyle has brought in here is guys that are just football players and that, that I feel like we have a lot of guys with unique skill sets skill sets um, like Debo like George I like to throw myself in that category um, guys that can do things at their positions that not a lot of a lot of other guys can do so that's uh, kind of something that we do around here. When drafts a um, quarterback real high. Or they have an established starter. It's one thing to say that you know the starter is going to be a pro, and you know, but it doesn't always happen that way. That the mm -hmm. guy's going to handle it the way he does. And I just want to get your observations of the way Jimmy's conducted himself through this whole season. And is it possible you guys even have more respect for him now than you did before after seeing the way he's done? Yeah, and that's we do, and that's and I I'm cautious to say that because I don't want it to come off like that we didn't have the respect for him before. Um, but Jimmy is, like you said, has been an absolute pro about this. Um, and if anything, bringing Trey in here has, has definitely motivated him and made him a better player. I think uh, Jimmy has been a better quarterback since Trey has been here. Now you have the mask on, obviously, there are stricter protocols, but there is a bit of a, a COVID problem around the league. Is there any apprehension or, or fear that here we go again? I mean, a little bit. It, uh, um, again, I'm cautious to say anything just because I don't know exactly what all the rules are yet. We haven't um, been told everything. But I definitely think there's, there's some frustration in the locker room, um, especially because, you know, we've been clean this whole year. We haven't, we haven't even sniffed COVID here. So, uh, and we've been following all the rules that we've been given. Um, so, it, I mean, it's a little frustrating. And we, don't want, we hate to see things going backwards. Uh, we felt like we were moving in the right direction. So, um, I mean... I'll stay positive and say hopefully these regulations um, just get more guys playing on Sunday. So hopefully that, you know, we get what we want out of it. Daniel was just talking about how Brandon Ayuk, he was kind of funny with us in his press conference after the game, after he made the play. And Mike was kind of excited that he was kind of, you know, unraveling the onion a little bit. Yeah. Is, is, what is he like in the locker room? Because he's so quiet and so <laughs> reserved when he talks to us. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, Brandon, uh, you know when he's comfortable with you. And uh, I think I'll echo what Mike was saying. I think it's pretty awesome that he can come in here and have fun with you guys because that means he's in a good place. Um, he's in a good spot and he's happy with what he's doing. Um, 
And when he's happy, we're going to be happy because that means he's doing things well. So um, Brandon is a, a extremely motivated, extremely hardworking, very conscious, conscientious person. Um, he's very intelligent and he, you can see him processing a lot of things. He just doesn't always speak on it. Um, so I am happy to see that he's in a good enough place that he can uh, joke around with you guys. You talk about kind of football guys, people that can have multiple skills, yourself, George, Debo. Obviously, they have Cordero Patterson. What's kind of the, the comparison between him and Debo, or is there kind of no comparison for Debo right now? Uh, no, I would honestly, if there's anybody in the league to compare him to, I think that's your guy. Um, and I, I got a ton of respect for Cordell Patterson. I, he's one of my favorite players in the league just because of the all the different fun stuff that he gets to do. Um, so, yeah, I would say that if you're going to compare Debo to anybody, that, there's your guy. We talked about this early in the season before it actually got to come to fruition, but now Alex Mack is facing his former team. What kind of impact has he had? cerebrally on, on the offense from, from that center position as he's had time now to get you know fully involved in the system? Yeah, a big one. Um, he really is directing traffic out there. And uh, I think one of the things that he's best at is being such a clear communicator. And that's so key um, when it comes to making points in the run game, um, to communicating our, our third down protections and all that stuff. He's, he's so clear and concise. And uh, he gets up there, and it's quick, and it's done efficiently. Um, and I think that's shown in um, just our execution. Uh, having him there has really helped. Sorry, um, sorry my ignorance, but you said toes at seven and a half. What does that mean? <laughs> that's just um, his alignment. Toes at seven and a half uh, deep from the from the ball. We have different alignments for you know every different every, every play. We have a coaching point, as Bobby Turner likes to say. Yeah, yeah, totally. You're checking me. <laughs> yep. Thanks, guys. Daniels was just in here talking about Brandon and how well he spoke to us after the game and was kind of joking around a little bit, which is unusual for him because he's a little bit more reserved in front of us. But Mike said that in the locker room and in players' meetings, he's much more lively and he's opened up a lot more. What have you seen from him personality-wise in the locker room? What is he like? Um, someone that loves football, loves being around the guys, um, likes you know everything that comes with football. Um, he likes practicing. Uh, he likes the time in between practice, just watching film. I, I just like it's like being around a guy that likes football, and it's a guy that we want on this team. Uh, I think his confidence is continuing to go you know up and up, continuing to make plays, and when he's confident, he's a hell of a football player. So uh, <clears throat> I mean, yeah, he just. Continually getting better, and uh, I mean, he's still pretty quiet. He's just, a lot of times, he doesn't like to talk to people, but you know, he definitely. Uh, I mean, he's, he engages with everybody when he's in the locker room. It's fun. You see that sarcasm and sense of humor from it. Oh yeah, I get that once in a while too. Yeah. I you know, it's kind of back and forth. It's always fun for us. Kind of, I mean, you're kind of one who provokes a little bit. Just what says who? <laughs> you're wow. kind of an instigator. So do you do that with him a little bit? Uh yes and no. Uh, I just you know. For me, I always always try to you know tell Brandon have a great day, because you know you just want to be great today. It doesn't really matter what happened yesterday. It doesn't matter what happens tomorrow, but you just want to be great today. And I always just try to hold him to a high standard because I think he's a hell of a football player. Yeah, after the game, you had excessive soreness. Uh, obviously, there was a lot of catches and a lot of time on the turf, mm -hmm. hard turf. When does that go away, or has it kind of officially gone away? Uh, no, I think what what week are we in? Fifteen. Excessive soreness. So, you know, we'll remain until March or something? Yeah, I mean, yeah. whenever the season ends, hopefully, you know, late February. I'll be good after that. I forget whether uh, John or, or Kyle said this, but one of them said that you have gotten better uh, over the years at sort of protecting your, your lower body from, from tacklers. Um, and I'm just wondering whether you agree with that and, and whether you're using your offhand more uh, than you ever have? I mean, there's guys that take me out in my ankles regardless. I mean, you can see that Bengals game, I had a shell, 30 came up, got me and like hit me right in the calves. Like there's not really much you could do about that. I mean, really, if you know a guy's going low, you just got to get your feet off the ground so they don't stick and you don't hurt yourself. I mean, I try my best to not get, you know, hit low. But when your back's turned to somebody and they come at you like a little missile, there's only so much you can do. Um, I don't know, I think I've always been aggressive with my offhand. 
always try to be, always try to punish people that try to tackle me. Um, because, like I said, when your back's turned to them, they try to hit you as hard as they can. And when you're facing them, it's a little bit different. Uh, Next Gen Stats had you down for uh, multiple catches on six different routes uh, the other day. Uh, I'm just wondering how much, I know you take pride in your route running. How improved do you think you are just in terms of uh, being able to run maybe a fuller route tree or, or maybe being more well-rounded in that one? Uh, I mean, it's something that um, it's been a goal of mine just to get better at all the routes that, you know, we call this so I can be an, an option on all those routes. Um, I think I'm getting better at it. I think I still have a long way to go. I mean, I watch other guys run routes, whether it's on film or just on our team. I think there's a lot of people that run really, really good routes that, you know, I think I run certain routes really well and there's certain routes I got to get better at and just understanding uh, whether, I mean, I, I get if it's man or zone, but like your route's different based on a leverage, based on this, where the defenders, you know, lined up across me and stuff and just being better at that stuff and understanding, you know, when to do certain things on certain plays and when not to. Um, I don't know, like first, uh, one of our third downs, second quarter was the deep ball. I got to run that a little bit different to give myself a better chance. So it's not, you know, just a toss up ball. Because um, I feel like I could have beaten them a little bit better. But, you know, that's where you watch film and I'll be better on it the next time we call it. How do you, how do you run that one better? Oh, just attack his leverage, not just running out wide and go. You know, because if you're running a wide and go, he can literally just meet you halfway down the field and it's not really that difficult for him. So just run a little bit different, give myself an advantage to run past him, and get his feet to stop instead of just opening up. You got a chance to work with Kyle Pitts over the summer. What was that like, and just kind of what have you seen from him as a rookie for the Falcons? Um, yeah, it was really fun to work with Kyle Pitts. Um, just to meet him, uh, you can tell he's a guy that's uh, he's confident. I like that about him. Uh, he knows he's a good football player, but he was very humble, and I really appreciate that. Um, I'm just watching his tape. Um, it's I don't watch every single game, but just seeing it. Um, what one of the things I do like about him. I mean. He might not be the greatest in the run game, but he gives effort. He gives himself a chance by his first two steps off the ball. I've seen that a couple times when, like, whether it's outside zone or something, he's not afraid to put his face in there, which I really appreciate. And I, I like watching that on film. Um, but he's really good at route running. He's got a great feel for space. And then when you're that tall and you have those arms like that, you can catch about anything that they throw it to you. And he makes a lot of spectacular plays. Was he trying to kind of pick your brain there? I mean, I know obviously he was seen more as a receiving tight end kind of coming into it, as you said, kind of. Did he talk to you about run blocking at all? What, no, nah, sadly he had to leave a day early, so he missed the run blocking seminar. When the team uh, drafts its quarterback of the future and has an established starter, it's one thing to say that the, the starter is going to be a pro and handle it like one. And, but it doesn't always happen that way. It's, it's obviously happened here. And Jimmy might be playing his best football right now. I just want to get your observation on do you guys, I mean, you obviously respected him before a ton. Is it even more now when you see the way he's handled this? I mean, I think my respect for Jimmy's always been at all-time high. And you look at any interview I've ever been in, probably the last three years, I get at least one to five questions about Jimmy G on, uh, is, he, you know, is he still a good quarterback and stuff? And um, I wouldn't even call it falling on the sword for him. I respect him. He, get, he delivers when you need him to deliver. We all make bad plays, and you know when you're the quarterback, it's obviously magnified because you're, you're the guy controlling the ball. But I think Jimmy's playing really well right now. Uh, he's delivering the ball. He's confident in the pocket. He might make a mistake, but he doesn't let it. You know, it's not in the back of his head at all, and he just keeps slinging it. And you know, that's what you have to do in the NFL. Yeah. You're a young, young pup. This happened uh, before you were born. But do you know about Kellen Winslow's you know game against the Dolphins in the playoffs when he had kind of. They said to be dragged off the field overtime win. Oh yeah, I've seen okay. that photo multiple times. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. All right. There, there was some talk that your performance, while not quite that dramatic, and not a playoff game of overtime, and you were kind of banged up. But both memories of, uh, of that. Yeah, I, I walked off the field. Yeah, you did. I always walk off the field. Nah. <laughs> nah. I was excited. Adrenaline kind of kicks in for all that stuff. Much of a question, but I, just I appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks, guys. You're also really close to, sorry, you're also really close to Nick Bosa. Mm -hmm. D'Amico said that he should be in line for a comeback player of the year, defensive player of the year, with the way he's going. Nick said he's not really focused on that. He wants, but he does. Does he? Is he? Oh no, I mean, I, I don't think Nick cares about anything except for attacking the quarterback, which is awesome. I mean, he should be. I don't know how he's not comeback player of the year. I don't know how many sacks he has, but I know it's a lot, and he just does it every single week. Um, if you don't put two people on a minimum, he's going to sack the quarterback. Um, he's so fast. He's so fluid, so dang strong. Um, I mean, it's not really anything you do to stop him and, unless you put two, three people on him. And 
I don't know how he's not, um, you know, the front runner and running away with comeback player of the year and uh, just doesn't like to get talked about, you know, as a defensive player of the year. And then even though he's having a hell of a year and people just can't stop him. Hey. Good. Your uh, coordinator was just up here uh, kind of doing a good job spreading the word that you should be a candidate for defensive player of the year and comeback player of the year. What do you think about that, his support and your candidacy? Um, I appreciate his support. Um, but I'm just trying to finish out the year strong. You were saying that you moving you know, from left to right doesn't affect how much you get double teamed or chipped. Is that accurate, or do you find that they cannot you know, have a pre-snap strategy, or at least have as effective a pre-snap strategy when they don't necessarily know where you're going to be? Um, I mean, it, it could help a little bit sometimes, but I'm sure if they want to chip me, they'll they can move somebody over and see where I'm standing. So, but I, I just enjoy moving around. Do you? Um, it seemed like the is it fair to say that what the Packers did as far as chipping you was the most effective? Yeah, I think they chipped me the most. I don't really remember it that well, but um, it definitely had somebody on me, majority. But Aaron Rodgers also gets rid of it really quick, so that those two things together. You haven't felt sorry for yourself again? <laughs> no. Yeah. At this point in the season, everybody is dealing with something, some sort of injury or whatnot, but your production has gone up as the season has gone on along. Do you feel better at this point? or? Yeah, I definitely do. I think I'm still getting better as we go. Um, I think today was my best practice so far. So um, I kind of expected it uh, with what I was dealing with with the knee, um, and uh, I'm just glad I was able to um, just manage it the right way. And then now it's on the on the right track. How much of that was dealing with? Itself, but also just maybe like the mental block of, of knowing it's there. Like when, when did you kind of break through in that way? Um, I think both of them kind of slowly got better, but I don't think, other than the first game on that turf, was I really too much thinking about it. So um, after that, uh, I was pretty good mentally. Sacks have been coming in bunches now, Nick. Are you uh, aware of what the, the team's single season rack, sack record is? And is that something that you, you can start tracking knowing that you, you're at 14? Um, yeah, it's 19 and a half, Alden. Um, yeah, I'd like that. Uh, definitely would like to have my name on there um, for this organization. Uh, but also, I'm just trying to take it one day at a time. Was that something even on, was that among the personal goals you had coming in? No, I, I, uh, yeah, I, I've never had this many, so, um, now I know I could get it. It's like the season, you're not really practicing in pads and you're working on techniques. How do you, what are the indicators that tell you you had a great practice today? Um, just feeling good, executing our, our third down game plan really well. Um, winning, uh, beating, beating our scout team, uh, which we have a pretty darn good scout team. I, um, just compared to what I've had in the past, I think a lot of guys, um, could, could play, I mean, have played in real games, McKivitz, uh, Jalen, Banks is coming along. Uh, Brendel's a good center. Like we have some, some pretty good players on the scout team, so they give good looks. And whenever you could beat them a good amount and and get home, it, it's a good day. You've never had. I don't have your bio. You've never had fourteen at any level. I think fourteen was my most in high school, but it's a little different. It is. It is. Uh, do you remember what year in high school? I think it was my sophomore year. 
Yeah. You mentioned that Banks is coming along. In, in what ways has, has he developed most uh, over the course of the year? Just better. Uh, he's, I mean, he seems stronger. Uh, but yeah, just pass protection better, more stout. Um, I don't go against him too often, but when I have, I've and I've seen him in one on ones and stuff. Uh, he's looking good. This is uh, two years ago, but do you remember playing in December and you know any sort of rookie wall issues that year? And, and how do you feel this year compared to, to two years ago? Um, I know it was definitely rough mentally. I think I'm a little bit starting to feel that. Just the the getting up early and and getting going on meetings and stuff uh, is kind of tough. But I feel really good at practice at this point. Um, I just have to get past the the mental part of how long the season is. You mentioned today was your best practice. What, what about your practice? Were you were you particularly happy with today? What about it? Yeah. Um, didn't I just answer that? <laughs> uh, just winning a lot of rushes and feeling good, executing the game plan. Hey guys. Thank you. Thank you. Make sure you subscribe.